With all the hype over free energy and endless fuel using paper to make burning bricks, we have to wonder, does this really work? Is this for real? Well, let's find out. Let's start with some paper from the recycle bin. And we'll add some cardboard as well. I'm not going to shred this stuff because I want to see if minimizing the work put into this project can still produce a fuel that can be used to cook or to heat a home. We'll need to add enough water to cover everything. This allows the paper and cardboard to soften so it can be made into a sloppy goo. And since cardboard has a lot of air in it, we're going to put a rock on top to keep everything submerged. Then we just have to wait overnight. It's time to grind it up and make some papery goo. An inexpensive paint mixture in an electric drill should work just great. Let's get rid of the rock and it's time to roll. Now mixing takes a little patience, but within a few minutes we're going to have ourselves a nice and slurpy goo. That's the stuff to make bricks out of. Time to get the water out. The left side bucket has a smaller bucket inside. This smaller bucket has slits in the bottom and sides to help drain out water. We're going to add a piece of PVC inside there to raise the bucket and allow the water to drain out the sides. I'm going to try three different methods of making bricks. The first is pressing out the water between two plastic containers with holes drilled in them. Let's put some of this good stuff into one of the containers and I'm just going to press this by hand. No special press required. And I'll speed things up a bit because it's not very exciting to watch. Within a few seconds, we've got our first brick. For the second method, let's try a little more pressure. An industrial sized caulking gun to do the trick. Take a two inch piece of PVC with holes drilled for drainage and we're almost there. We need to add something to the end to keep the goo from flowing out the end. This perforated plastic cut to size should do the trick just fine. Take the plastic piece, put it in the end of the PVC pipe, hold it in place, then add your goo. When that's full, put the pipe into the caulking gun, just like you would a can of caulking. It's time for a little forearm workout. As you compress the goo, it drains out the water. Keep compressing till the water stops draining. Then remove the pipe. Don't lose the little round perforated piece. Then use a stick or pipe to help get the new goo log out. The ground is good and solid, so let's use this to help push the log out the end of the pipe. Look at that compressed mini log. This will dry quickly and can be used to get your fire going. Now the third way to make bricks is the simplest and the fastest. Just take big wads with your hands, grab a water goo, squeeze out as much water as you can, and repeat. Set everything out in the sun, give it a few days, and you're ready to burn. Now I, I used an old food dehydrator to speed things up a bit. Put them in overnight and they're ready to go. Now it's time to test it. I started with the small hand press pieces to see if they would self light. Now you've got to treat this like you would a regular wood fire. Start with small stuff, build a base, then add larger stuff as your fire grows. I was very happy to see that with some good positioning, this started without any other fuel needed, just the paper logs. Now it's going well and we're going to add some larger pieces to make a larger, hotter fire. Again, Good positioning is key for a good fire. It's burning well and it's hot. Hot enough to cook? Well, let's take a look. At a thousand degrees, this thing reads high, so you know it's hot. Now, my next experiment was to take a larger piece and see if it would self-light. I know it doesn't work well by itself, so I poured a little oil on the end and added a wick to see if it would light. Let's see what happens. Well, after a few minutes when the wick burned down, it was pretty much out. So let's help it out a bit. Goo gone. Combustible, but less explosive. Let's add a few squirts, then we're going to light things up. Awesome! Now while that burns, we'll try this on a different piece to see what effect it has. Be super careful with this stuff. Never pour near flames. Now take a look at that. That is great. Now we have a base that's burning well. We'll build it up to see how the other pieces will burn with a good foundation underneath them. About five minutes later, and this is a cooking fire, it quickly hits the high mark on the thermometer. An hour later, it's still over 600 degrees in there. 
take a look at that. Hey folks, that works pretty well, but let's do one more experiment. The last test is to see how easy we can make this and still be effective. So we've added the rest of our goo to the drain bucket. Now I'm not going to squeeze out any water. I'm just going to let gravity do its thing. The next day I tapped it out of the bucket and put the large uncompressed brick in the dehydrator. The sun would work, but just take a little bit longer. A few days later, and it was ready to burn. Let's see what happened. Here are a few little pellets I cut out of one of the caulking gun logs to act as a fire starter, and some extra encouragement to move things along. And let's light her up. Check that out. After a few seconds, it's looking good. Let's add our uncompressed brick and see what happens. After a few minutes, the flames have died down a bit, but it was still burning really hot. An hour later is pretty much a pile of ash, and still pretty hot. So is this truly the endless and free fuel source people are raving about? Well, that may be stretching things a bit, but I'm convinced that this can be a great use for scrap paper and cardboard, and it doesn't have to require special equipment and take tons of effort to make it happen. Hey, if you've got any ideas on how to make paper fuel simpler and more efficient, we'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment below.